Hey guys, it's Tate with Royce, and today we'll be making a point and click nav mesh movement system. So to start off, we already have our 3D scene here. And I'm gonna, just going to add a child and I'm going to go for nav region 3D. Nav region 3D is what we'll be baking to make sure our nav mesh is in the proper area. So now we can add a child and we can go for mesh instance. 3D. So nav mesh region will take a mesh instance 3D as a child and it'll be able to bake to the mesh. So if we new do a new, let's say, plane mesh and we scale this up, we can just go to our navigation region 3D and click new navigation region and then click bake. So this is our current navigation region. That our player will be able to move around within. So now let's add some click movement. So first off, our nav instance 3D is going to need a static body for our ray cast, which we'll be doing later, to collide with. So static body, and let's add a collision shape to that. And let's just do box shape, and let's stretch this box to the param to the width of our Plane. That'll be good. All right, now let's create our player. New scene, and let's make our player a rigid body 3D. Let's do that. Let's add a child node of collision shape 3D, and add another child node of mesh instance 3D. Let's make our player. Let's make our player a box, and our collision shape will also be a box shape. Save this as our player. And we're going to also need to add nav agent 3D so that it knows how to navigate our nav mesh that we have created over in the main scene. And a camera 3D so that we can actually see what's going on in the game. So let's move our camera. Let's move it up, rotate it down a little bit. Uh, actually, let's do this. Rotate down. How does this look? Perfect. That's all we'll need. So this is all we need for our player scene. Actually, let's also set our gravity scale to zero so we don't just fall through the world. Perfect. Now let's add a script to our player. And I'm just going to call this player.cs. It's already named here. And it's going to be type of C sharp script. Now that we're here, we're going to need to get reference to a couple things within our player scene. The camera and the nav agent. So camera 3D, main cam, and navigation agent 3D. I'm going to call this nav agent. Now let's get reference to them in our ready. Public override void underscore ready. Main cam equals get node camera 3d and since we didn't rename it this will also be camera 3d nav agent equals get node navigation agent 3d and also we did not rename it so navigation agent 3d Perfect. Now we need to make sure our navigation agent can't leave the, our nav mesh. This is done within the nav agent. So we can set our path desired distance and our target desired distance to make sure that it's within the mesh and we're not skipping steps. So nav agent dot path desired distance equals 0 0.5 F and nav agent dot target desired distance equals 0 0.5 F. So if this number is too high, your player will be able to skip through the nav mesh and go off path, essentially. And we don't want that. Now let's create our override, or our process function, public void override. Uh, wait, I did this wrong. Public override void underscore process. And what do we need to do? Well, first, we need to set up something for our mouse. Like, we need to set up a 
looking for a mouse, being able to look for a mouse click. So let's go into project, project settings, and I have it here from my previous tests, but I'm going to delete that. I'm going to create a new action, mouse click. And I'm going to add in my left mouse button. Perfect. Save that. So now if input dot is action just pressed mouse click what are we going to do well we got to do actually a bunch of things so vector 3 from so we're going to be casting a ray cast sorry we're going to be casting a ray cast which a ray cast is something from the physics system it's like a line of collision and so we're going to be casting that from the mouse's position and we're going to be sending it out towards the game from our camera towards the world. And if it collides with something, we're going to take that data and move towards it. So vector three from equals. So from is from our mouse position. So main cam dot project ray origin. Get viewport. Get dot get mouse position. Perfect. Now we're going to need where we're sending our raycast to. So vector three, two equals main cam dot project ray normal get viewport dot get mouse position and I forgot something here. So vector two equals from plus main cam project ray normal dot get viewport dot get mouse position times by let's just say a hundred so that's the this hundred is the distance we want our ray cast to go how far do we want our ray cast to go now we need to create a query for a ray cast to handle these variables that we created so physics ray query Come on. Physics ray query parameters 3D. And I'm going to call this ray query equals new physics ray query parameters 3D. And we're going to pass in our from and to variables into this. So from equals from and to equals to. So this just sets our parameters without us having to call it later. So now we need to define the space that our raycast is in. So like where it is and it hasn't collided with anything. So physics, direct space, direction space, no, direct space. I misspelled physics. Physics, direct space, bot. Body state 3D space equals get world 3D dot direct space state. Now we need to return our now our raycast can collide with something and we need to return a variant. A variant is basically a default Godot variable. It can be of many types like integers and floats or vector threes, anything that Godot can use. A variant, it's their default type. So variant, new value, and now we need to get our raycast intersection with an object. So space dot intersect ray, pass in the ray query. Dot. So essentially, this is saying, has our raycast intersected with anything? And now I want to get the position of whatever that intersected with. So try get value position and we're going to output this to new value and I called it new val so this is just outputting our position of the thing our raycast hit to new val and we're going to be parsing this to a vector 3 in a moment so now we need to set our nav agent target position nav agent dot target position equals we parse it to a vector three. Vector three. New val. Hmm. 
now that that's done, we need to actually move our navigation agent. So first, let's just check that our navigation agent isn't already moving, or it shouldn't be moving at all. So if nav agent dot is navigation finished, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to set our linear velocity to vector 3.0, so don't move at all. And then we're going to return. Do nothing else. But if we're not finished moving, what are we going to do? Well, vector 3, current agent position equals global transform, global transform dot origin. So our current agent position is our current position within the world. Vector 3, next path equals nav agent dot get next path position so when we created when we added our target position here it created a bunch of paths and so essentially we're just saying get the next path for us to move towards now let's set our linear velocity of our rigid body linear velocity equals Current agent pos position dot direction to next path. And then let's multiply it by a speed variable. And I'm just going to say 10. Perfect. So now, if we go into here, save our player, and put it into our scene. Let's try and move this up a little bit. Save that. And we're going to also have to add a light actually. So add child node direction light. We're going to move this up. We're going to rotate it so that it lights our scene. That looks good. And let's run our game. There we go. Oh no. Okay, so I'm back. So what was happening is we were colliding with the static body 2D and that was stopping us. So I just went and made sure our player doesn't collide with anything. Obviously, you could make it <laughs> you could make it collide with other things, just I keeping it on a different layer than the static body 2D. So now if we run the game. We can move throughout our scene. But how do you make an obstacle within our scene? Well, that's actually very easy. So we can just add a child node, a mesh instance 3D again. Let's create this as a box mesh. Let's move it off to the side. Let's scale it up. Move it up here. And now we can just Go back to our navigation region and rebake our mesh. Oh, wait, this isn't as a child to our navigation region. Sorry. Now we can go to the navigation region and rebake our mesh. If you'll now you can see it won't let us walk here. So if I go to my game and click over here, it'll walk around this obstacle. Well, that's all for this tutorial. If you got anything out of this, I'd greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.